What is it you want, Barry? What do you want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dying times here. Come with me if you want to live. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. The Force will be with you. Always. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 20th Century Geek. I'm your regular host, Scott Weatherly. Now this week, or this episode I should say, we're going to do something a little special. This is only a mini episode, a bonus episode if you will, my little Christmas contribution. So I want you to sit back and enjoy some Christmas poetry. That's right, we don't cover this very often, or at all for that matter, but I'm going to give you some culture. So I'm going to sing to you, or at least I'm going to recite to you, a uh, traditional Christmas poem. Are you ready? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin. "'Twas the night before Christmas, and up in the tower everyone was partying, except one wallflower. John McLean missed his wife. Things just weren't the same, since Holly had moved west and changed her last name. He had tried to win her back, but still she had said no, while unbeknownst to them there was trouble below. A truck had pulled up, and who should disembark but fourteen men, whose intentions were dark. They spoke not a word, and unloaded big crates. They cut the phone lines, and locked all the gates. Carl swept the ground floor, shooting every guard dead, while visions of barabons danced in his head. John took off his shoes, making fists with his toes. It actually work. Well, what do you know? When out in the lobby, there arose such a clatter. He sprang to the door to see what was the matter. When what to his wandering eye should appear? Holy crap, there are terrorists here. John hid under a table where no one could see and watched Hans question Mr. Takagi. I'm going to count to three. There will be no four. Give me the codes to open the vault door. I don't know the codes, so go ahead and shoot. Okay, said Hans Gruber, and ruined Takagi's suit. John tried to call the cops by pulling the alarm, but instead called the bad guys, who tried to cause him harm. But John killed Tony, who had very small feet, and sent him to the terrorists as a yuletide treat. He put a Santa hat on the German, and eyes all aglow, wrote, Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. Carl was furious. Tony was his brother. He chased John across the roof, and they shot at each other. John was able to escape through the ventilation shafts. Come out to the coast, he sighed. We'll have a few laughs. At Nakatomi Tower, Sergeant Powell appeared. He checked the whole lobby and saw nothing weird. He was a-pulling away, but didn't get far, before Marco landed on the hood of his car. Pal drove away backwards, screaming in fright. Welcome to the party, pal, John yelled with delight. More police arrived, the FBI and a SWAT team. But Hans didn't mind, it was all part of his scheme. More rapid than eagles, his henchmen they came, and he radioed and shouted, and called them by name. Now Eddie, now James, now Franco and now Uli. On Fritz and on Carl, hair long and unruly. They shot the SWAT tank with a surface-to-air missile and knocked it away like the down of a thistle. Now John McLean was angry indeed. He blew up two terrorists and called them jerkweed. Ellis told Hans, Bubby, I'm your white knight. Hans shot him dead, giving the hostages a fright. Hans went to go check on the explosive fuse and saw that poor John wasn't wearing any shoes. 
John fled from Carl and Hans, but alas, he had to run barefoot over sharp broken glass. His feet, how they hurt, his soles, oh so bloody. John crawled to the bathroom and called his good buddy. John was weary and ready to throw in the towel, until he had a pep talk from Sergeant Al Powell. Powell was chubby and plump, a right jolly old cop, and he trusted the cowboy in the tattered tank top. But a reporter was probing into McLean's life and revealed that Holly was actually John's wife. Hans quickly flipped over the gold picture frame. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. McLean. His clothes all tarnished with ashes and soot, John staggered to the roof, bloody and barefoot. The explosives were wired to the rooftop with care, in hopes that the hostages soon would be there. John warned everyone the roof would soon blow as the chopper strafed him with high-powered ammo. Around his waist he tied a fire hose tight and, screaming an oath, jumped into the night. He dangled in the air and gritted his teeth while flames encircled the tower like a wreath. Fiercely fighting his way back inside, John yelled out, Hans! He was done trying to hide. He limped to the vault like an old man on crutches, only to find Holly in his filthy clutches. John dropped his gun, put his hands on his head. It seemed he and Holly soon would be dead. But with a secret gun taped to his back, John shot Hans in a surprise attack. Hans fell out of the window, still holding Holly's arm, and slowly, deliberately, raised his firearm. The tenacious villain held on by his nails till John unhooked Holly's watch and said, Happy trails. Barabons fluttered like fresh fallen snow as Holly embraced her blood spattered bow. So Merry Christmas to all, be kind to one another, and most of all, yippee kaye, motherfucker. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, a little snippet of uh, A Die Hard Christmas, written by Doogie Horner, and the book available most places, also illustrated by J.J. Harrison. And uh, Merry Christmas. I just want to say this is going to be the last episode of the year. I'm not going to do anything over uh, the Christmas holidays, so I just wanted to put this out. And I want to thank everybody who has listened and uh, interacted and participated in the show this year. It has been an absolute blast. It's been an incredibly tough year. It's been a really hard one for everybody around the world. But uh, for us at 20th Century Towers, doing this show and our sister podcast, uh, Stories at Time and Space, with the fantastic Julian Darius, makes it all worthwhile. Everything's fantastic on those shows. And I want to thank everybody on the Comics in Motion Network, uh, in particular sort of like Dave and Chris for setting all that up and introducing me to all those great, great guys. It's uh it's just such a great, great group of people to talk with, engage with, and I recommend all of the podcasts on the Comics in Motion uh, network. Go check them out. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, times are tough. Christmas is going to be small this year, and if Boris, Boris Johnson has his way, it might be even smaller. Uh, but I just want to say thank you very much again. Stay safe. Merry Christmas. And uh, 20th Century Geek will be back with a blast in 2021. Thank you, guys. I'll see you next year.